continuing with the classification of the welding processes, uh, in today's presentation we will see uh, the classification of the welding processes on the basis of uh, uh, the way by which the weld joint is made like uh, the pressure welding or fusion welding and another uh, criteria based on which welding process can be classified as a welding processes and the allied processes. So, uh, while in the last uh, presentation I, um, I gave uh, uh, the classification based on the uh, various factors like uh, the use of the filler metal, whether presence of R, whether arc is there or, or not with the particular welding processes or the source of energy being used in welding process for development of the weld joint. So, here uh, we will be starting with the, um, the classification of the welding processes based on the way by which the weld uh, joint is formed using pressure or using uh, the fusion. So, the fusion welding processes are all those welding processes where the fang surfaces that is the edges of the plates to be joined together are brought to the molten state and then uh, the solidification of the weld metal uh, whether uh, the filler metal is used or not results in the weld joint. So, in the fusion welding processes the fang, melting of the fang surfaces is a key aspect and uh, the solidification of the weld pool subsequently results in the development of the weld joint and the processes in which uh, this fusion of the fang surfaces is carried out uh, include like the gas welding cylind metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding process, uh, the uh, uh, gas tungsten arc welding process, sunburst arc welding process, electro slag and electro uh, gas welding processes. Uh, in all these processes one thing is common that whether we use uh, the filler metal or not, uh, uh, one of uh, the edges of the components to be welded or brought to the molten state and then subsequently solidification of the weld pool results in the development of the joint. Uh, well, in case of the pressure welding processes, uh, the, these welding processes primarily use pressure uh, with or without application of the heat uh, to uh, get uh, the plastic state and then uh, get the metallic continuity to produce the weld joint. So, the primarily pressure is used to uh, uh, get the metallic continuity with or without application of the heat and if heat if at all it is used then that is mainly used to plasticize uh, the metal uh, edges being joined or the components uh, to be joined. These are also termed as solid state welding processes and uh, the melting uh, is not there in these welding processes and mainly uh, the, uh, the heating is done. Uh, through the various ways uh, in uh, very small amount to soften the paying surfaces of the components to be joined. Uh, these uh, processes include resistance welding processes uh, which uh, are like resistance spot welding, resistance seam welding, resistance projection welding, flash butt welding or stud welding. And the in uh, all the resistance welding processes. Uh, first, the heat is uh, applied to soften the component uh, 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 component surfaces and the uh, the contact interface uh, by developing the heat through the electrical resistance heating, and thereafter pressure is applied to develop the weld joint. And uh, in all these processes, the same uh, sequence is used, whether it is a spot welding, seam welding, projection welding, flash butt welding or arc stud welding. In case of the ultrasonic welding process, ultrasonic vibrations are applied uh, in the components to be joined and this results in the interfacial, uh, the frictional effects and uh, the mechanical interlocking to produce the weld joint. While in case of the diffusion bonding, pressure is uh, applied between the components to be joined, the components are uh, uh, finished very properly to have the perfect metallic contact between the surfaces to be joined and then at high uh, temperature uh, the components to be joined are placed together under pressure. So, that the diffusion can take place across the contact interface and the bond can develop. Similarly, in explosive bonding uh, some uh, impact pressure, impact uh, 
force generates uh, the um, uh, uh, pl plastic deformation um, at the surface and results in the development of the weld uh, joint. In these processes, um, uh, the application of the heat is not to melt the fang surfaces, but uh, uh, mainly whatever heat is applied that is applied to soften the metal system. So, that with the application of the pressure or force, um, the metallic consolidation can be done to develop uh, the metallic continuity and so as to develop the weld joint. Uh, as far as comments on this uh, classification, uh, that is the fusion or pressure welding. The fusion and pressure welding process classification um, is most widely used and accepted one, because it covers all the processes in both categories, respective of the heat source and the welding uh, with or without uh, the filler material is used. And because of this feature, uh, this is uh, one of the most accepted, uh, the basis of uh, classifying the welding processes. Uh, further, in the fusion welding processes, all those processes are included in which weld metal is allowed to solidify freely. While in case of the pressure welding processes, the molten metal if any is generated or the semi solid state is achieved, then the solidification occurs under pressure conditions in very confined space and uh, uh, this uh, 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 the solidification or the consolidation takes place under the pressure conditions. So, and this happens say in uh, resistance spot welding and arc stead uh, welding process. So, uh, mo mostly in pressure welding either uh, the uh, uh, melting does not take place or even if uh, uh, some semi solid metal is formed it, uh, so it, it, it is consolidated under um, the pressure conditions to develop the weld joint. Uh, further in this type of uh, classification, this classification uh, does not pose any problem, therefore it is considered as a best criteria for uh, classifying the welding processes. The classification of the welding processes further on the basis of uh, uh, the way by which uh, the joint is formed or the material is applied. The many, many positive uh, joining processes involving addition or deposition of the metal were first uh, classified uh, under the welding processes, which are mainly used uh, for developing the joint and uh, the allied processes, which were used to apply the, uh, the molten metal uh, on to the uh, components in question. And this has resulted in uh, the another uh, way of uh, classification. We will see in the next slide, how the welding processes uh, were grouped under uh, this uh, way of classification. The welding processes were classified as a cast weld processes, fusion weld processes, resistance weld processes and the solid state weld processes. While uh, uh, the basis of this grouping was the way by which uh, the metallic continuity is obtained between the members to be joined during the welding. It means that uh, uh, how the metallic continuity is obtained between the members being joined by welding. For example, in the cast welding process, the molten metal is uh, supplied uh, between the components to be joined in the similar way as casting. That is why it is termed as a, a cast welding process. So, those processes where molten metal is supplied from the external source or the conditions uh, during the solidification of the weld metal are similar to those of the castings, then uh, these are termed as the cast welding processes. And uh, under, under the situations where the melting of the fang surfaces of the base metal was used to develop the uh, metallic continuity and get the weld joint, those were termed as uh, the fusion welding processes. So, melting, if the melting of the fang surface is involved, then these were termed as a, the fusion welding process. And if uh, the molten metal to fill the gap between the components to be joined were supplied from the outside or generated uh, in that way uh, between the components to be joined, then these were termed as the cast welding processes. There are two more uh, processes in this category. One is resistance welding and an, another is solid state welding processes. 
the in the resistance welding processes the heating the base material uh, is done mainly to plasticize uh, the components being joined and then applying pressure to force them together so as to get the weld joint while in case of the solid state welding processes mainly pressure is used uh, between the components to be joined so as to get the metallic continuity while when pressure is applied and relative motion is used it develops some amount of the heat that helps in thermal softening of the material we will look into uh, the detail of each these each of these four uh, types of the welding approaches but before going into that we will see that what are the allied welding processes according to this classification allied welding processes are many where metal is deposited in one or other way in uh, onto the base metal like uh, the soldering is used for making the joint but without uh, fusing the base metal surfaces so that metallic continuity can be obtained between the members even those who are having or which are having the metallurgical incompatibility similarly the brazing is also used where heating of the base metal is done only uh, to have the good bonding with the molten brazing material. So, the filler material is brought to the molten state by applying the heat and uh, the melting of the uh, fing surface is uh, avoided. Heating is done to have the good uh, uh, the metal metallic bond between the components being joined and to have the good fluidity of the filler material being applied over the surface over the surface. Uh, between the components. So, uh, while the adhesive bonding uh, in this case uh, uh, the adhesive is applied between the component uh, onto the fing surfaces to get the joint between the component uh, being joined. While in weld surfacing weld overlays are developed over the surface either to get uh, the desired dimensions or to get uh, the better corrosion and wear resistance surfaces. While the metal spraying is another metal deposition process where uh, the material metals or alloys and their composites uh, are spread over the uh, base metal surfaces to uh, either to enhance uh, the wear resistance and corrosion resistance or to get uh, uh, the desired dimensions uh, after the, the machining of the thermal spread components. So, in all these processes um, except in weld uh, surfacing the melting of uh, the base material is not uh, generally uh, achieved uh, and uh, the surface uh, the uh, some sort of uh, the deposition of the metal is achieved onto the surface of the component either to enhance the surface characteristics or to uh, get uh, the, the joint between the components um, in consideration. So, we will see that uh, in greater detail about the four uh, welding uh, for uh, the broad classification of the welding processes under four categories like the cast welding processes, resistance welding processes, solid state welding processes and uh, the fusion welding process. Then cast welding processes are those processes in which either molten metal, molten weld metal is supplied from the external source or it is melted and solidified between the components to be joined at very slow rate like in casting. Under this category, we have the two welding processes namely thermite welding and electro slag welding. In thermite welding, molten metal uh, the is a uh, uh, weld metal is brought to the molten state through the chemical reaction outside um, uh, the weld joints uh, and then it is poured or supplied between the components to be joined. While in electro slag welding, the weld pool molten weld pool is developed between, between the components to be joined through the electro resistance heating itself, but the casting, but the cooling conditions are very slow similar to that of the castings and that is why it has been put uh, under the category of the cast welding processes. In the thermite welding the weld metal is melted externally and supplied between the components to be joined while in case of electro slag welding weld metal is melted by electrical resistance heating and then it is allowed to uh, solidify under very slow cooling conditions. These conditions are similar to that of the castings. So, if uh, we seek uh, critically this classification then this classification is true 
uh, for thermite welding process, where uh, casting like conditions exist and the molten metal is supplied from the external source. But in case of electro slag welding, the weld metal is obtained by melting bo uh, both uh, the electrode and the base metal and is not supplied from the outside. So, these conditions are not similar to that of the casting, only the cooling conditions are found similar to that of the casting that is very low cooling rate. So, in case of the electro slag welding, since the weld metal is developed and uh, obtained by uh, melting both filler met both electrode and the base metal and is not supplied from the outside uh, like in thermite welding, that is why this classification is not uh, found perfect for uh, classifying the welding processes. And now, we will see uh, the fusion welding process. Fusion welding processes are those in which the feng surfaces are brought to the molten state and then uh, subsequently solidification results in uh, the development of the weld joint. The cooling conditions uh, during the fusion welding process are much higher than those experienced in the casting and this in turn results in the much finer structure and much better mechanical properties. Uh, of the weld metal than, the, than those uh, produced by the casting process. So, the cooling conditions, cooling rate conditions experienced by the weld metal in these processes are much higher than the casting and this in turn results in the better mechanical performance of the weld joints than the components made by in the casting process. The heat required for melting the feng surfaces can be produced in these uh, welding processes either with the help of electric arc or the plasma laser or electron beam or by the chemical reactions between the fuel gases and the oxygen. So, here there may be any type of the heat source which can be used for uh, melting the feng surfaces and then subsequently on solidification obtaining a metallic continuity results in the fusion weld joint. If we see further this uh, a classification uh, is an undisputed way of uh, classifying the welding processes. The common processes uh, uh, which are put under the fusion welding processes are like carbon arc welding, ciliate metal arc welding, submerged arc welding, gas metal arc welding. We can put also the gas welding process, laser welding process and uh, the tungsten inert gas welding process. So, there are many welding processes which can be put uh, easily without dispute under the fusion welding process where uh, the melting of the feng surface is achieved by applying the heat from the external source and then subsequently in the solidification of the weld metal results in the metallic continuity to produce the weld joint. So, this uh, list further we can extend like the gas tungsten arc welding, plasma arc welding, electro gas welding, laser beam welding, electron beam welding and the oxy fuel welding process. The, the way by which heat is generated in these processes may be different, the mechanism of the heat generation in these processes may be different, but the common feature in all these processes is the same that is the, the feng surfaces of the base metal are brought to the molten state to get the metallic continuity between the components to be joined. While in case of the resistance welding process, heat required for uh, in, in the resistance welding processes, the heat uh, is used mainly for softening or for achieving the partial molten state of the base metal and uh, this is done by the electrical resistance heating. Uh, subsequently, the pressure is applied to force the contact uh, uh, the com components and the get the metallic continuity by consolidating the weld metal in form of nugget at the interface. So, uh, however, in the flash welding, butt welding which is a, a type of the resistance but uh, uh, which is classified under the resistance butt welding, this process begins with the sparks between the components during the welding instead of generation of heat by the resistance welding process. So, here the mainly the heat is generated by the sparks and subsequently after cleaning and softening of the metal surfaces, the pressure is applied to get the metallic joint by forging and the components to be joined together. So, the process which fall in this category where uh, the electrical resistance heating is done to develop the desired heat for softening 
or getting the semi solid state at the contact interfaces. Um, and thereafter application of the pressure results in the development of the weld joint. And these processes and uh, the welding process which fall in resistance welding process category are the spot welding, projection welding, seam welding, high frequency resistance welding, high frequency induction welding, resistance butt welding, flash butt welding and stud welding. Here it is important to see this uh, resistance uh, induction welding. Uh, basically, induction effect helps to induce the current uh, near the surface layers and uh, when the, this current is generated, uh, again the heating is uh, heating is realized through the electrical resistance heating only and that is why uh, this process uh, high frequency induction welding process also has been categorized under the resistance welding uh, processes. Now, we will see in the solid state welding process, these processes uh, mainly the pressure is applied and uh, marginal amount of the heat is uh, applied for developing the weld joint. However, uh, the melting of the base metal is not achieved, heat is applied mainly for uh, softening uh, of the components being joined, so as to get uh, the plastic state. Uh, uh, of the varying amount in the different processes. Uh, the joint in these processes is obtained through the various mechanism such as the mechanical interlocking which is a main mechanism in case of the explosive welding, while large scale pl interfacial plastic deformation is in involved in case of the friction welding and friction history welding process and the diffusion is another mechanism through which uh, the metallic continuity is obtained in the solid state welding process where uh, the contact uh, uh, surfaces are uh, finished and is smoothened to such an extent that there is perfect metallic uh, uh, intimacy between the components being joined and then exposure at high temperature results in the diffusion of the elements from one side to the another and that in turn results in the metallic continuity to produce the joint. Depending upon the amount of heat generated during these welding processes, these can be further classified as a high heat input, a high heat input solid state welding process or low heat input uh, solid state welding process. Low heat input welding processes are like ultrasonic welding, where um, through the ultrasonic vibrations little amount of the heat is generated at the interface. So, mechanical interlocking plus thermal softening associated with the marginal heat development results in the, the joint uh, at the interface uh, by the ultrasonic welding process. In, uh, similarly, in cold pressure welding and expo explosion welding process, in all these processes mainly mechanical interlocking is uh, uh, the mechanical interlocking which uh, takes place by the plastic deformation of the surface expertise uh, present at the component surfaces results in the development of the weld joint and uh, uh, the minor heat development at the contact interface uh, helps to soften the, uh, the surface layers and the peaks and valleys present at the surface. Well, in case of the high heat input, uh, the solid state welding process, lot of heat is generated by the friction or by the external source. So, this heat uh, uh, is used in different ways. For example, in case of friction welding, application of heat is you, uh, heat helps to soften the edges of the component to be joined. Thereafter, uh, the, uh, the metallic consolidation through the application of the pressure or forging like conditions are developed, developed to uh, develop the weld joint. So, whether it is a friction welding or friction is steel welding, in both the cases a lot of heat is generated that helps to uh, plasticize or to soften the base metal components being joined. Uh, further, the forge welding process also heat is applied from the external source and then the component to be joined are, fo are forced together using the uh, external pressure. And the, similarly, the diffusion bonding is also carried out at considerably high temperature, uh, but below the melting point of any of the components and to be joined, so that uh, the diffusion can be facilitated at higher rate and the weld bond or diffusion bond can be developed uh, in order to get the desired joint. So, 
they are, they are, uh, we have seen uh, the so many uh, parameters, so many criteria, so many the ways through which uh, the classification of the welding processes can be done. However, the fusion welding and the pressure welding criteria is the best one and the most accepted way to classify the welding processes. Here we can see here um, this uh, the last grouping of uh, the welding process indicates uh, that the welding processes and allied processes. Here we can see uh, the welding processes have been grouped under one category and the allied processes are un under the another category. Under the welding processes again we have the four uh, the different groupings like in cast weld processes, fusion weld processes, resistance weld processes and the solid state uh, the weld processes is what we have seen just now. So, cast welding process involves the thermite welding and the electro slag welding, while the fusion weld processes are like carbon arc weld process, sealed metal arc welding process, submerged arc weld process, gas metal arc weld process, gas tungsten arc weld process, plasma arc, electro uh, gas, the laser beam, electron beam, oxy fuel gas pro, uh, weld process and the resistance welding process are like uh, spot welding, the projection welding, seam welding high frequency resistance, high frequency induction, resistance butt and the flash butt welding process. Under the solid state weld process category, we have both low heat input and high heat input welding process, where in the low heat input welding process, we have a ultrasonic cold process, cold pressure and the explosion welding process, while under the uh, high heat input welding process, there is friction welding or friction steer welding process the forged welding and the diffusion bonding. Under the category of the allied uh, welding process, allied processes where some sort of deposition of the metal or material is carried out in order to either get a joint or to improve the surface characteristics like the metal, these are the mostly metal depositing processes like soldering, brazing, adhesive bonding, weld surfacing and the thermal spraying. We have seen that uh, in the uh, welding, welding uh, by the different processes, uh, the heat uh, uh, plays a very important role in development of the weld joint, whether it is being used for melting the fine surfaces of the base metal or uh, to soften uh, the metal com metallic components being joined or uh, to facilitate the diffusion. The heat is uh, uh, applied in, uh, in the different ways uh, during the welding for the different purposes. So, in this uh, part first we will see what are the various uh, sources of uh, the heat and uh, what for they are applied uh, in the different welding processes. So, in this part we will see the need of the heat source uh, uh, during the welding and then the common sources, uh, common ways through which uh, heat is generated for welding purpose and the factors that affect the heat generation uh, associated with each welding process and uh, the effect of the heat generation and the heat application on the performance of the weld joints. So, these four aspects will, will be looking into the greater details like uh, depending upon the uh, uh, welding process in consideration heat is generated and applied in different ways for the different purposes. Like in some of the cases, heat is uh, generated by arc and it is mainly used for melting the fine surfaces, while in other cases heat is generated uh, by the combustion of the fuel gases with oxygen and it is uh, used either for melting the fine surfaces or only melting the filler material or to facilitate uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, mechanical uh, uh, thermal softening of the material uh, to be joined by the forging uh, pressure. So, in the different uh, welding processes, heat is generated in different ways and uh, applied for the different purposes. Heat can be generated in the uh, using uh, the following principles, say the chemical reactions uh, which are um, uh, mainly exothermic in nature used for generating the heat desired and this uh, approach is used in gas welding and thermite welding processes and uh, the electric resistance heating, electric resistive heating, electrical resistive heating is mainly used in electrical resistance 
welding processes, while the frictional heating uh, uh, is used to generate the desired heat for softening and uh, forging uh, the component to get the metallic continuity like in ultra uh, sonic welding, although a little amount of the heat is generated, but lot of heat is generated in the friction welding and the friction steel welding. The electric arc heating heat generation by the electric arc is mainly used in the arc welding processes. There are various types of the arc welding processes. Then the radiation heating like microwave and the laser beams are also used to generate the heat for the different purposes, whether it is melting of the fang surfaces or thermal softening. Then interfacial friction and the impact is also used, although it generates very little amount of the heat like in ultrasonic welding and the explosion welding process. It is not expected much to uh, soften the metallic interfaces and the fang surfaces uh, through the heat generated by this approach. So, we can see that there are various uh, uh, the approaches and the ways through which heat can be generated and applied during uh, the welding and when the various welding processes are used. A particular approach or the principle is used for generation of the heat during the welding by a particular process. Each type of approach we will be looking into the greater detail related with the way by which heat is generated or the factors that affect the heat generation uh, by that uh, uh, approach. When uh, the heat is generated, it is applied on to the fang surfaces of the component uh, so as to get uh, the metallic continuity by applying pressure or without application of the pressure. But this application of the heat is done for the different purposes in the different welding processes. It can be done for melting the fang surfaces like in fusion welding process and the heat can be applied for only for thermal softening to get the plastic state uh, in the components to be joined like in resistance welding and the friction welding process. And uh, heat can also be applied uh, only for say melting of the filler material and heating the base metal uh, to get uh, the good fluidity of the filler material like in brazing, soldering and uh, thermite welding. It is not expected that this application of the heat will be uh, to melt the uh, base material, but heat is mainly applied in these processes to melt the filler material so that it can uh, spread uh, and uh, get the uh, spaces between the components to be joined properly. Further, heat can also be applied to facilitate the diffusion across the contact interfaces in process like diffusion bonding. So, if we see uh, the heat uh, generated in the different welding processes can be used for the different purposes, so that uh, uh, the metallic continuity is obtained, whether it is melting of the fang surfaces, thermal softening of uh, the, uh, the metallic component or the uh, surfaces to be joined or melting of the filler material only or uh, thereafter heating of the base metal marginally not to the molten state and then to facilitate uh, the diffusion across the interface to get uh, the diffusion bond. So, depending upon the purpose of the heat application, different amount of the heat is uh, generated and accordingly the principle of the heat generation is used. If uh, melting is to be done then high energy density sources are used. If only uh, the thermal softening is done, then somewhat low energy density processes can be used, uh, which can generate the energy at very low rate and supply the desired um, heat to increase the temperature of the material in consideration and question, so as to get uh, the thermal softened condition, to, so as to apply the pressure and get the uh, the metallic uh, continuity uh, by developing the weld joint. Uh, so, depending upon the purpose, the different uh, amount of the heat generation may be required and for that different principles can be used and accordingly the selection of the welding process is made. For example, in uh, heat generation by the chemical reactions in case of the gas welding involves the use of the hydrocarbon gases, where like gases like acetylene, propylene, propane, hydrogen and natural gases can be used. And when these gases are uh, burned 
and or the combustion uh, is facilitated in presence of the oxygen with the optimum uh, amount, then it uh, uh, performs the exothermic uh, reaction and generates a lot of heat. Uh, when uh, this uh, combustion takes place, combustion of these uh, hydrocarbon fuel gases in the oxygen takes place, uh, typically uh, the two or three uh, cones are formed in the flame and accordingly these are termed as the primary and the secondary zones in the flame. So, primary zones generates the lesser amount of heat as compared to the secondary zone. Secondary zone is the outer envelope of the uh, flame which is bluish in nature while the inner portion which is whitish in color is termed as the primary cone or primary zone where comparatively lesser amount of the heat is generated as compared to the outer zone. But uh, the total amount of the heat generation by the combustion of uh, the unit quantity of the uh, fuel gas and the oxygen results in the different amount of the heat generation. For example, uh, the acetylene on complete combustion results in 18.97 units of the heat uh, for a unit quantity of the fuel gas combustion, uh, while in secondary zone it results in 36.03 uh, mega joule per meter cube of the fuel gas consumption and thus the total heat generation by the combustion of uh, the 1 meter cube of the acetylene results in the 55 mega joule of the heat, while the peak temperature uh, in general it results in the range of um, 3000 to 3300 degree centigrade, but on average a uh, 30 uh, temperature around 3100 degree centigrade is generated. This uh, the combustion of the acetylene with the oxygen in optimum amount results in the highest uh, temperature among all these uh, the fuel gases which are shown in the table and uh, this in turn results in very uh, effective the welding and the cutting. Uh, processes because high heat higher temperature of the flame results in the rapid uh, the melting uh, of the fang surfaces and the faster welding speed while other welding uh, other uh, ox, uh, other uh, the fuel gases like propylene propane hydrogen and the natural gas results in uh, somewhat the lower amount of the heat generation uh, and uh, the peak temperature so, the peak temperature uh, or generated within the flame is more important from the welding and the fusion uh, point of view of the base metal as compared to the heat generation. As we can see the heat generation by the propylene and the propane are higher than that of uh, the acetylene, but uh, the peak temperatures are significantly lower than that is generated by the combustion of the acetylene. So, this uh, temperature difference decreases the rate of the welting, decreases the rate of the welding speed and uh, therefore, other fuel gases are not that popular uh, uh, than the acetylene, but uh, all other gases are very cost effective. So, for uh, the somewhat low production rate conditions, uh, the cost effective fuel gases are also used, but there is certainly difference in the peak temperature which is generated in the flame and uh, the heat generated. So, we can see that uh, the different uh, the fuel gases on combustion results in the different uh, peak temperatures in the flame. The acetylene results in the maximum uh, uh, means highest temperature among these gases as compared to the other gases. So, accordingly uh, this uh, the use of the oxy acetylene flame results in the uh, higher um, the welding speed and the cutting speeds as compared to the other gases. If we see uh, further uh, the heat generation in the uh, primary zone in general is lower than the heat generated in the secondary zone, but the peak temperature is found maximum in the primary zone which is the inner cone and that lower temperature is observed uh, in the outer zone all the more heat is generated. This uh, happens primarily because of the difference in the surface area um, uh, related with the secondary zone which is much wider and bigger and is in direct contact of uh, the atmospheric 
air at very low temperatures. So, a lot of heat losses takes place from the secondary zone and that in turn results in the lower uh, temperature of the secondary zone. However, the more heat is uh, generated in the secondary zone, but uh, the peak uh, uh, primary zone is of very small in size and uh, covered with the hot uh, the secondary zone. So, uh, despite of having the low heat generation in the primary zone, peak temperature generation generated in the primary zone is much higher than the that uh, uh, is in the secondary zone. So, we can see that the typical reactions which uh, takes place uh, in the uh, flame in the different zone. As I said, uh, depending upon the oxygen and the fuel gas ratio, we can have the three different types of the flames. These are neutral flame when oxygen and acetylene ratio is almost equal, while uh, uh, when the oxygen ratio is greater than the fuel gas, then it results in the oxidizing flame and the fuel, ga fuel gas uh, ratio of the fuel gas uh, and uh, the oxygen is greater uh, than 1, then it results in the carburizing flame. So, the new uh, the tip uh, schematic uh, um, uh, structure of the neutral and the oxidizing flame is shown in this diagram, where uh, the inner cone is this one, where the peak temperature is generated in this zone, although lesser amount of the heat is generated by this reaction, where the acetylene reacts with oxygen to form the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen and the heat generated is around uh, uh, the uh, 448 kilo joule per mole, that is about 18.75 mega joule per meter cube combustion of the acetylene, while in the outer cone outer cone and uh, the, uh, the this kind of a reaction takes place where carbon monoxide and hydrogen again reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and the water vapors, but at the same time it results in another exothermic reaction by generating lot of heat to produce the huge quantity of the heat in the secondary zone. But if we see the size of the inner cone is much smaller and uh, all the heat generated is also lower than that is generated in the outer cone, but because of uh, it is a small size and since it is covered by the hot uh, the secondary zone, the temperature generated in the inner cone is much higher than that uh, uh, is of uh, the secondary zone. The temperature in the secondary zone is around 1275 degree centigrade, while it is maximum around 3100 degree centigrade in the inner cone. So, it is always desired that the if the welding is being done, then the faint surfaces are brought in contact with this inner cone, so that uh, uh, the heat is transferred very rapidly and uh, uh, the melting can be facilitated at faster rate to ensure uh, the higher welding speeds. So, this is important while uh, deciding the torch tip distance from the base metal. So, this is an important point to be kept in mind while deciding the decision about uh, the torch tip uh, distance from the base metal. We will see the carburizing flame, it happens when uh, the fuel uh, ratio of uh, the, uh, uh, the fuel gas and uh, the oxygen is greater than uh, 1 and uh, uh, under these conditions, we get a lot of unburned fuel gases and which in turn results in the third flame between the inner cone and the outer cone. And this is called uh, the feather and uh, the length of this feather is found uh, proportional to the amount of the excess fuel gas, which is present with the, the fuel gas mixture, which is being used. Uh, uh, this uh, carburizing flame is normally not used uh, when uh, uh, the hardening, uh, hardenable steels are welded because these uh, gas, these flames frequently supply the carbon to the steel and which uh, in turn increases the uh, in uh, hardness and the cracking tendency of the weld joint. Further, the temperature generated in these flames is also lower than the oxidizing and the neutral flames. Another process where heat generate is generated by the chemical reactions is the thermite welding. In the thermite welding, uh, this process uses the metallic oxides and some reducing agents. So, the 
uh, basically the reduction of the metallic oxides with some reducing agents um, happens with the exothermic reaction which in turn generates a lot of heat. The oxides that are used for generating the heat through the chemical reactions are like oxides of iron very commonly used for thermite welding of the rail steels, but uh, the oxides of the manganese, oxides of copper, chromium are also used for uh, uh, generating uh, heat so that, uh, so that uh, the filler material can be melted outside and then it can be fed between the components to be joined and uh, for uh, performing the reducing reactions uh, the other uh, the metallic uh, reactive metals are also added with the oxides and uh, these are manganese and uh, the aluminum. Any of these metal systems in form of ribbons or powders can be used uh, to initiate the ignition so that uh, these oxides can be reduced. So, heat is generated because of the oxid uh, uh, exothermic reactions which is reducing in nature. So, here the iron oxide say a mixture of iron oxide is uh, uh, and uh, the aluminum powder is being used for a thermite welding purpose, then it results in the reaction um, of the uh, reducing reaction of the iron oxide with the aluminum to produce iron and the aluminum oxide. And this reaction occurs with the uh, liberation of the lot of heat that helps to melt uh, the iron powder and uh, this uh, the molten and uh, the metal is then fed between the components to be joined. Similarly, if the copper oxide is used then it is reduced with aluminum to produce copper and the aluminum oxide. This is also associated with the exothermic reaction and liberation of lot of heat. The temperature rise in the thermite welding can vary significantly from 1400 to the 2500 degree centigrade. This temperature is found enough to melt the iron and the other um, metallic constituents which are used as a filler metal and so as to get uh, the weld joint. Uh, thermite is a uh, typical trade name for a mixture of uh, a granular or powder form uh, aluminum metal and the powdered uh, iron oxide and because of this, uh, this process is called thermite welding because it uses the thermite which is uh, basically a mixture of uh, the aluminum iron, iron, iron oxide uh, powders. And uh, usually this uh, mixture is uh, ignited with the help of the magnesium ribbons when it is burned it gives off uh, the lot of heat for melting the uh, filler material. This filler material and then is applied between and the components to be uh, joined and the rail steel is one of the uh, common example where thermite welding is used. Heat generation uh, by arc welding in the heat generation by arc welding this is another approach for generating the heat using the electric arc and uh, this can be used uh, for uh, melting the fang surfaces and uh, so this heat generation uh, by the welding arc is basically uh, governed by the flow of current uh, through the arc where uh, uh, and when arc is established the flow of current that is the welding current and the arc voltage uh, with, uh, across the base metal and the electrode. So, this uh, the product of the uh, uh, the welding voltage and the welding current uh, results in the heat genera generation and this heat is basically generated uh, because of the resistance to the flow of current through the plasma region between the electrode tape and the base metal. So, here basically the product of the, uh, the arc voltage and the welding current uh, indicates the uh, power of the arc. And since the arc is uh, continuously moving during the welding, so it is therefore it is important to find out the net amount of heat applied to the uh, the base metal for melting purpose. And this is done by uh, uh, dividing the V, uh, the uh, power of the arc that is Vi 
with the welding e speed that is s. So, this helps to give uh, get us the, the net amount of the heat being supplied to the base metal and the unit of this is going to be the kilojoule per mm. So, when the arc is established between the base metal and the electrode, the, uh, there is a particular arc voltage and there is flow of current that helps to generate the heat, but uh, this uh, also results in the melting of the base metal and the filler material. This filler material becomes very active and frequently it uh, reacts with the gases present all around. That is why the protection of the weld pool from the surrounding gases becomes important. The amount of the heat generation by the arc welding is governed by uh, basically the two factors that is the arc voltage being used and the welding current. And, uh, the, the magnitude of the arc voltage uh, by a particular uh, for a particular process or the current vary significantly with the type of welding process being used. So, they are uh, the upper and lower limits of the arc voltage and the welding currents which are associated with each welding process. Few welding processes work with very low current and the very low voltage like TIG. For example, it is uh, common to uh, use the current in the range of 50 ampere to 150 or 200 amperes with the tungsten inert gas and the voltage to the tune of the 15 to 20 volt. While in case of the submerged arc welding, high arc voltage is common which may vary from 50 volt to the 80 volt. While in case of submerged arc welding, current can vary from 200 to 2000. 2000 amperes. So, this variation in arc voltage and the welding current associated with a particular process can result in the significant difference in the heat being generated during the welding. So, accordingly the heat generated and the energy density associated with each welding process vary significantly because the welding current becomes different and the arc voltage becomes different and at the same time the size of the arc or the area over which uh, uh, the heat is applied through uh, the arc. Uh, these things vary uh, with the uh, well each welding uh, arc welding process and therefore, uh, the significant difference in the energy density associated with the each welding process is found to vary significantly. We will see here a, a typical comparison of uh, the energy density related with the each welding process. If we see here, uh, here in this uh, the plot, uh, in addition to the arc welding process, uh, the other welding processes like uh, gas welding and uh, the electron beam welding and the uh, laser beam welding also has been given. We can see here the power density uh, related with the heat source is very low with the gas welding and uh, it is in uh, watt per centimeter square while in case of the manual metal arc welding is somewhat higher then further higher with the metal inert gas welding and then further higher with the plasma arc welding and then electron beam welding and the laser beam welding. In this, this difference in the power density associated with the each welding process is primarily due to the fact that the area over which heat is applied and the rate at which heat is uh, delivered to the base metal. It is very low rate of the heat generation and very wider area is covered during the welding in case of the gas welding. That is why it results in very low power density. While in case of the arc welding, although energy density is high, but not as high as in case of the plasma TIG or electron beam, but it uh, further results in the higher uh, temperature uh, of the arc. Uh, uh, say around uh, 5000 to 6000 degree centigrade and the arc uh, size is also very small. So, this in turn results in the um, somewhat higher arc, uh, uh, higher energy density than the gas welding and this is the same logic is applicable in all other welding processes where uh, the rate at which heat is generated and the area over which it is, is applied uh, during the welding onto the base metal results in the significant difference in power densities associated with the uh, each welding process. So, here we have seen 
that there are different ways through which uh, uh, heat can be generated and in this part further we have observed that what are the different uh, how heat can be generated uh, through the chemical reactions and uh, the heat generation through the arc and the factors associated with the each welding process. In the coming presentations, we will see the other uh, approaches through which heat is generated for the welding purpose and what is the need of uh, protecting the weld pool from uh, the atmospheric gases and what are the various approaches available uh, with the different welding processes to protect the weld pool that we will see in the coming lecture. Uh, thank you for your attention.